This is the video that I needed to watch before buying the Seastar S50, that knowing this, I still would have bought it, but gee, it would have eased a lot of the frustrations that I've had and calmed the learning curve that was quite abrupt and kind of chaotic. So uh, we're gonna get into this video and then I, you'll, it'll make sense as you watch through. G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here. And there's only two other things I've been more excited to open in my entire photographic experience ever. If you wanna know what they are, have a guess in the comments below. We can have a bit of fun down there. But this is number three, and I'm very, very excited. It's been out of stock for such a long time in Australia. So I ordered this ages ago. I was provoked into doing it by the company reaching out and saying, would you like to review one of our things? And I went, yes. We had a chat about it, went yes. And then they went silent on me. And then I saw this and went, oh, yes, again. So, oh, oh, the Sea Star S50. I am gonna take photos of a galaxy far, far away. Now, this is a two megapixel camera, but it takes photos and it layers them on through an app, translating to your phone, and so you have this denser and more deep picture that builds in a raw format that you can then edit. I have some questions around how this works and what it does that I wasn't able to pick up another review, so I'm gonna answer that in this review after we have a play and get out there and just praying, praying for clear skies. Clear skies. Let's see how we go. Yes. Look, it comes in this epic case. This is the Sea Star S50. There is a Sea Star S30 and various others, but I was keen for the Sea Star S50 from Zwa. Perhaps you could phonetically comment down below how you actually say their name. It's a foam case, but very firm, with a beautiful handle up here, a couple of attachments, but if I click, unclick, so exciting. And here it is. So one of the questions I had is, does it come with a tripod? Because you can actually buy them without a tripod. The tripod is a three eighths on top and two piece that manages to go to here. And there's a level on here. And one of my other questions is, does it have to be dead level? It has just various filters that come with it. A solar filter, I believe, charging cable. So this is how big it is. I was always, and how heavy it is. So this is the weight of just this and three eighths on the bottom, obviously fits into this, but any other tripod. So if you wanna put it on a more significant tripod, like I think I'm gonna do, we'll uh, see how that goes. And has a charging port. There's the power here and the charging port. Where is it? I saw it. Yeah, here. Turn it on. Oh, it beeped. I'm expecting it to spring to life. Or maybe not. Powering on, ready to connect. I'm gonna go allow once on the app. That was the uh, location setting is set. This is really important for this. Oh, sounds like Doctor Who. Go connect. Press the reset button to confirm the connection. Oh, the reset button is just there. Connection confirmed. Oh, join my network. Get on my Wi-Fi, come on, giddy up Gary. Congrats, uh, firmware update. Yes, we are definitely gonna update the firmware, which is really important on this. The firmware has been significantly updated to allow you to do some things that previously were absolutely impossible, but now it's very exciting. But we'll get to that in just a minute, what that looks like. Updating firmware. It's nice how it talks to you though, isn't it? Just looking at the tripod while this thing sorts itself out and it doesn't, it can't go flat. It only goes to one configuration, but it is carbon fiber and it does extend out to this height. Restarting. Please check the power status button. It's orange, yellow flashing rapidly, firmware is updating, yellow solid light, firmware update complete. Then I go, okay. Powering on, ready to connect. So I think I've got to go through the connection process again. <clears throat> Open arm, yes please. So it's all automatic. And as you can see, it's got the uh, temporary lens cover on it there. And then the idea is that the app causes it to track. So you work out what you want to do with the app. You want to work out how you find what you want to find by using these really easy options. 
and then you take this outside, you press start and it finds whatever you're looking for, it goes for it. So here's what we've learned. When you take this outside and you set it up on your tripod, and I used a leveling tripod, so a very strong, sturdy tripod with a leveling, I got the level exactly right and put the C-star on top, it's a 3 8 inch uh, thread that's required. Uh, when it goes on and you turn it on, you're all excited, it then takes a long time, like it takes 10 to 15 minutes to do the horizontal calibration that you need and your compass calibration. It takes time to find the stars that you want and then you've got to get the right one that you want. Sometimes you want to reframe. So that whole process isn't just to turn on and see how you go. It actually is quite involved and in depth and uh, you have to pay attention to it and sometimes it doesn't quite work. Sometimes you get a bit of cloud that comes over the top and so you have to start again. So just so, so you work, it's not a pull out the box, stick on the tripod and away you go. Uh, it will require some time and effort and some patience in that space. Now clear nights are absolutely essential. I undercooked how important they are. If you got a little bit of cloud, it'll stuff this right up. And what it'll do is it'll be able to lock on to what you want, but then it'll drop frame after frame. And so you could be filming for four hours and get 40 seconds worth of exposure, just the total waste of time. It's also the case that if the moon's at full or really bright, it obviously um, changes the, the uh, contrast in the night sky. So you won't be able to pick up and this won't be able to clearly work as much as you do. Also, if you're in a place where there's a lot of satellites coming over the the, over the place and we know this day and age there are millions of these stinking things um yeah it, it will it will also challenge with this so if it talks about star trails or dropping frames it's likely the reason all your tripods not rock solid steady if your tripod's a little bit thin a little bit moving around um you might have a bit of challenge with it because this moves and as this moves you don't want it sort of moving out of place, it assumes that it's a stable base as it moves and tracks the astrological entity that you're shooting. You also want to make sure you're away from large metal objects like cars or fences or other iron or magnetic sources because it will stuff up the calibration and the tracking of your C-Star S50 and I imagine S32. Now, how do I know all this? Because I've stuffed it up and stuffed it up and stuffed it up. And there's an amazing number of Facebook pages that you can look at. So I would encourage you to go on the Facebook forums, get on the Facebook pages, ask a bunch of dumb questions, listen to the people there who are really, really brilliant. They're looking at this video now. You guys are amazing. You're looking at this video now and you're thinking, I'm getting my fingers ready to comment and say how inaccurate this is, whatever. No, no, I'm for the S50. But if, if you guys are watching and you can add any value to people that are thinking about buying this that would be helpful for them to know beforehand put them in the comments below we'd love to have your wealth of wisdom shared there now when we talk about wealth of wisdom here's a good example in astrophotography when it comes to that deep space stuff an image isn't called an image it's called a sub and a, a series of um, exposures put together is called an integration so when you hear about integrations that's what it is it's like a segment of shooting when you hear about a sub that's a single image and you can shoot on different nights on this you can shoot the same astrological entity entity, so the, the nebula, on the first night, and then you can go back the second night and third night, and it stores it all in a folder. And then you can compress those, you can use those photographs um, to, by stacking them in the RAW. Now, it doesn't come out as a RAW file, it comes out as a TI p file a tip file and that means you can only edit it in certain um, programs and then you export it as a jpeg or a png and then you can edit it in say a lightroom or a photoshop so just be aware of that you need another series of uh, programs to do that and amongst those programs are cyril pixisite and Graxpert, and there's probably a bunch more. So guys, again, if you're listening and watching, put in the comments below some really good editing software that would be free or affordable for our crew to get stuck in to this sort of uh, beautiful photography. It produces two megapixel photographs because of the sensor in it, and so you'll need some software to upscale that if you want to use it in any broader thing. Something like Gigapixel by um, by Topaz will be able to do that. But you also, when you, when you think about this, start shooting um, on an angle of less than 65 degrees so when it shows you on the app it'll show you what stars are available and where you can shoot and what's in your night sky right now and that changes throughout the course of the year but you'll also see where the um the level of the star is based on where your latitude is and so you want to choose the ones that are below say 65 percent because if you get too much of an angle this is outside of eq mode We'll talk about EQ mode in a minute. When you go outside of an angle, you're actually looking at the stars um, because they move faster when they're up above than when they are here or they appear to move faster. They don't 
actually. Um, again, correct me when I'm wrong. But there's more chance of a, a star trail if you're shooting up here. A star trail is instead of a dot, it's a thing. So you've got 10 second exposure, but you can increase that to 20 or 30 second exposure when you put this in EQ mode. Now, when you do EQ mode, you have to know a couple of things. You have to have a solid tripod that's not going to move at all. You have to have a wedge. Now, this is a wedge, or you could use a fluid head. This is a fluid head. A wedge is ideal, it's made for this. Uh, a fluid head is, it, it works as well. So you might have one of them lying around which you can use, which is what I use, because you wanna change the um, angle of the camera ever so slightly and tweak it when you get to those finer points of finding the polarization. Now, I realize some of this language I've got a little bit wrong, but How it'll make sense when you open the app and, and you go Sista. forward. So when you're setting up BQ mode, you have to have a black night. You can set up in the daylight, but to actually make it dial in, it has to be a black night with no clouds, bright stars, and you have to be able to see the southern pole, southern Polaris, which is basically the southernmost point where all the stars all focus to. And that's where you focus it in. And the app walks you through. But if you say failed, you're either near something metal, the tripod's moving too much, the sky's not clear enough, there's clouds in the way, or you've... <laughs> Well, you've not gone true south, you've just gone magnetic south. So another learning. And hopefully by now you're going, okay, keep these things in mind. I'll get it. I'll go back and I'll check these things. Um, so you have a picture. I'm just like plug and play. Here we go. And well, this is the best I've got. This is the best I've got so far. But also since buying this, I've had two nights that have just been great nights and the rest have just been rubbish because we've had the storms and all the cyclones and everything through. And it's still raining, still raining. Three weeks later, it's still raining. And then there's lots of other things I could share. And if you've been watching this, you think you also need to know that comments below. Let's look at those comments below today, guys. Um, but the other thing is you can have the C star compress and, and layer those photographs for you. And it builds, it builds the preview. And so you have this, wow, this is what it's turned out to be. And this is what it is. This is amazing. Um, or you have a each individual file and then you can edit those different files. But again, they're tip files. They're not raw files as we understand in other forms of photography. And therefore, or need that specialized editing um, uh, software to do that. Now I find you can actually reframe that not the latest firmware, the latest firmware is allowed EQ mode, and EQ mode is what I talked about before, and it takes away the chances of uh, you dropping frames because it's actively tracking the, uh, the constellation that you're zeroing in on. So there's much higher success rate if you can get EQ mode to work, or you can, but if you can use EQ mode, much higher success rate. Um, I also found that you can reframe it, and as you reframe it, sometimes it doesn't like being reframed. And it can take up to 20, 30 minutes and you're sitting there and you're growing more and more frustrated. So it's always good to have something else to do while you're waiting for this or just enjoy the serenity, enjoy the silence. And then I found you can actually, you can add a battery source to this. So you can plug a battery in and you can power it all night or as long as it will go. You also need to make sure you're powering your phone at the same time because your phone is what's building the preview. You can go in and out of the app. Don't close the app down, but you can go and do other things on your phone and come back to the preview and that doesn't affect the way the telescope works or the communication which is really really helpful um, but also if you shoot this overnight so I'm in Australia I'm in Queensland it's quite tropical quite humid and I let it shoot overnight and I came back the next day and the whole thing was sopping wet I'm talking about water was dripping off of it um, now it hadn't been raining it was all from the condensation the temperature and stuff so just be aware of that you can't put an uh, umbrella over it because you then limit the scope that the um, actual uh, telescope has and whilst it would protect it from those elements so just keep that in mind i'd suggest um doing a series of shots over a series of nights of the one thing and then compressing them obviously the more layering you have the more detail you extract and beauty you create but the um, software enables you to actually edit the constellation and edit the background all in the same thing it's quite incredible but i hope this has been helpful now let me know if you've got any questions down below not that i'm going to be able to answer any of them but others will be um, and this might be a great opportunity for people who are really looking to get into some amazing astrophotography with the s50 and with the s30 to give it a go thanks for your patience your understanding and for all of those out there who have helped me already i really really appreciate it and onward and upward to some more astro bangers thanks for watching like subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye